Hello, welcome to Do You Remember's Memory Lane. Wild Kingdom captured man's imagination for decades, beginning with a memorable premiere in 1963 to its first bittersweet finale in 88. But while Marlon Perkins dished out all the wild facts about even wilder animals, I've got some secrets behind Wild Kingdom for us to discover together. I'm your guide, Nostalgic Nick, ready to embark on a safari back to the Wild Kingdom. And he's as cunning as he is deadly. If you enjoy our trip, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you catch our next ride down memory lane. What better way was there to end a weekend than with 30 minutes of animal trivia? The only animal that really took to basketball was the raccoon. I wonder if the Globetrotters have ever heard about this fellow. I know one way, getting an insurance policy with Mutual of Omaha. And even better, getting right into this animalistic deep dive. Please keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle. Mutually beneficial. When Wild Kingdom was born, there wasn't an oversaturated wildlife market. Zoo Quest and Survival are probably the biggest names that come to mind. But as a series, the nature documentary was kind of new. So leave it to zoologist Marlon Perkins, the host behind Zoo Parade, which starred the animals of the Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago. The sponsor of Zoo Parade was the insurance company Mutual of Omaha. So Perkins talked it out with their CEO, BJ Scutt, about transferring even more support to an even bigger project, the Wild Kingdom. Scutt was big on philanthropy. He helped support Catholic education in Omaha, set up a public health award for welfare, and both he and his company paid for an educational center for the Henry Dorley Zoo. So for him, the idea of more documented wildlife was just another tool to teach the public about the importance of nature and conservation. But as man's needs require more and ever more land, how can we preserve some portion of the wild kingdom? And Perkins became just as famous for his sometimes silly ad transitions. Like the lion stalks its prey, you should catch yourself an unbeatable insurance policy with Mutual of Omaha. To avoid being cornered by sickness and accident expense, we need health insurance from Mutual of Omaha. Of course, it wasn't just for the audience's benefit. Wild Kingdom became a huge hit and major profits for Mutual of Omaha. The two became one entity. Remember, after all, its full name is Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. A lot of words for a lot of dollars earned. A blizzard of revelations. The beast goes by many names. The Yeti, the Merka, the Abominable Snowman. Legend says this titan of a woolly man stalks the Himalayan mountains, towering on two legs over a human and bearing sharp, pointed teeth. He's something of an Arctic Bigfoot, and just what Perkins set out to find in 1960. Perkins set off with Sir Edmund Hillary, a famous adventurer who was one of the first to reach the top of Mount Everest. Together, they scoured the Himalayan mountains, and there they came upon tracks, big ones, unlike any creature known to man. Well, maybe creatures, plural. As when Perkins looked closely and studied the environment with the keen eye of an animal expert, he concluded that those large tracks were actually small tracks. A bunch of footprints from smaller animals like foxes, all smashed together, melted in the sun, to now look like one bigger so-called footprint. Elementary, my dear Watson, elementary. Scrodinger snake bite. Who shot J.R. Ewing wasn't the only big plot point of those years. Wild Kingdom watchers will remember all too well when Perkins was bitten by a venomous snake. When? Well, it definitely happened just not on camera. Our collective memories weren't wrong. Perkins was filming for Zoo Parade, and because he grew up around snakes, it was important for him to show everyone that they're not creatures to hate. But during some pre-show preparation, he was bit by a dangerous timber rattlesnake. One little nip on the finger was all it took to get Perkins rushed to the hospital, where he recovered for three weeks. Definitely one memorable disaster, except that it was all off camera. In his 1982 autobiography, Perkins shared how often Often people would talk to him about that moment. It feels so vivid and many people were worried about their favorite host that it's easy to think it was something we all witnessed. Foul play. The soft and sophisticated words of Marlon Perkins became the voice of Wild Kingdom, but Jim Fowler was the brawn, the engine that kept the machine running. He handled most of the animals, navigated rough terrain, hauled heavy objects, the Robin to Perkins' Batman, if Robin did the heavy lifting, of course. But Fowler, too, came with an impressive zoology background. He spent his childhood exploring every inch of Falls Church, Virginia, which is a scenic wonderland. 
I've always found that exploring the habits of animals is fascinating. Later, he studied zoology and geology in college and became the expert on raptors, working at a raptor sanctuary in Florida. He traveled around Africa and South America studying wildlife. When Perkins stepped back from hosting Wild Kingdom, Fowler was a natural replacement. He was always a treat to watch, bringing fascinating animal friends to The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson and acted as the wildlife correspondent for The Today Show. You mean it could take my arm off? It's well, just a bird. No, is it? this is the fat. Put this on. Go on. What? I'm going to let you do this. As well as becoming Animal Planet's wildlife expert, earning multiple awards in the process. Getting technical. As it became quickly apparent, Wild Kingdom was a big trendsetter and helped dictate the nature genre. Making this revolutionary series required some creative thinking and new tech to go along with it. Producer Don Meyer is credited with keeping the program fresh. At first, the series was based in the Omaha Zoo. Helpful, convenient, but limited. Sure, they could be creative and bring stuff to them, but what they really needed was to go to the animals. Not only would this massively increase their scope and potential, it also gave viewers an unprecedented look at animals in their natural habitat, something so important for authentic education. To conserve and control wild animals, we need to know much more about them. But once they filmed these critters, audiences needed to really see them. So the Wild Kingdom team rigged all the gear they need to film the animals in color and with crisp sound too. Later, they brought on additional nature experts to give their input. All this to show their new genre to a new audience that they mean business. Monkey business. Between the two of them, Perkins and Fowler have handled a whole lot of animals. Mostly Fowler, while Perkins safely narrated, the eagle was a majestic sight to behold, and the bear cubs were just too cute. Who else remembers floating along the Amazon River with those two? But they didn't always have to travel far to see furry friends. In fact, they live with some. Well, Mr. Moke, you'll be interested to know that today we're talking about your homeland. Footage of the studio was never complete without seeing one or two chimpanzees. One was named WK and the other Mr. Moke. WK got his name from the initials of the show. And Mr. Moke was named after the Mini Moke Convertible, a sharp looking boxy car that originated in England. Emmy for your thoughts? Wild Kingdom's back must have hurt, carrying so many awards around. At the time, Wild Kingdom was one of the very few syndicated shows to earn an Emmy nomination, and it won an Emmy for Outstanding Program Achievement. Not just once, it took home the trophy from 1966 until 1970, as well as more nominations on top. That changes the term trophy hunting. Dark Underbelly of the Kingdom on the outside, Wild Kingdom was a perfect blend of educational and thrilling. Of course, in today's age of reality TV being staged beyond recognition, we know that there are few coincidences in life. And in 1982, an investigative piece by the Fifth Estate looked closer at some moments, like rescuing a baby moose stuck in the mud. And they asked how much human intervention was there, not in the rescue, but from the start. The segment was titled Cruel Camera and was all about uncovering the mistreatment of animals in the entertainment world. And what they found in Wild Kingdom was worrying. Host Bob McKeon approached Perkins for a surprise interview and asked if Wild Kingdom had created scenes in nature for entertainment's sake. In response, first Perkins told the team to turn the cameras off. That was denied and McKeon persisted with the interrogation. And Perkins responded by punching him in the face. Some other members of the crew have confirmed that scenes were staged, like when the team caught a bear in a swamp. The bear had first been placed there, which kind of throws a wrench in the whole thing. Dissolution of a Kingdom by 1971, Wild Kingdom episodes were usually repeats, but they were still making new content, and it got great ratings with its primetime slot plus syndication. New episodes continued until 1987, but things started to deteriorate. First, in 1985, the iconic Perkins started to face health battles. Newspapers were reporting about cancer in the lymph nodes. He had to undergo chemo and radiation, and the whole ordeal made him unable to continue hosting. So Fowler took up the job, bringing with him his ample experience and then in 1986, the team mourned the death of Perkins. Had things gone differently, Perkins and his wife planned on traveling around Africa again, the place where so many Wild Kingdom episodes took them before. A Wild Legacy Nothing makes an issue quite so real as bringing it close to home. In the 
putting a face to it and shining a spotlight for us all to see. And there is no doubt Wild Kingdom did that for preservation and conservation efforts. Fowler often slammed the way wildlife was usually portrayed in the media and how important it was to show a different angle. He said, quote, most of what you see now emphasizes animals being dangerous to humans. It does an injustice to the natural world. And he added, quote, the biggest challenge is how to affect public attitudes and make people care. Well, Wild Kingdom certainly did that. Environmental awareness went up in the US because of it, and Wild Kingdom became the standard for nature shows, many of which it helped jumpstart by showing that yes, this is a genre that people wanna watch, and for positive things too, not just tragedy or shock value. Thanks to Wild Kingdom, we have Wild Wild World of Animals, Animal World, and Lauren Green's New Wilderness. All of this success in the genre opened the door for Animal Planet and Discovery Channel to flourish. Millions of Americans were suddenly able to look through a window and see dense forests, sweeping plains, and colorful creatures half a world away. In 2002, a revival once again let us venture to faraway lands from the safety of our living rooms. Really puts everything into perspective. So let's chat. What was your favorite creature to learn about? Was this a Sunday night staple in your household? Please share your wildest memories in the comments below. We read them all. Like the meerkat stands and watches the horizon for intruders. Please smash that subscribe button so you'll be on the lookout for new content. And we hope you've enjoyed this visit into the wild kingdom. As always, from all of us here at Do You Remember, thank you very much for watching.